What's happening, everybody? How are you? It's the fan. It's the Tiki. It's here to show it's Friday. And it's the last weekend without Major League Baseball. Let's go. Yanks and Mets, obviously, crank it up next week. We've been cranking it up for a while. And I'm about to crank it up on somebody that's really starting to bother me a lot now. And it's twofold, all right? I got to get this Julius Randle stuff out of the way. Enough. Enough. Enough with Julius Randle acting like a belligerent clown. Uh, a selfish fool at this point. Now, I appreciate his motor. He's had a great season. That's not the point. This is not basketball-related. All right? I understand, you know, when you're making whatever he's making, $30 million roughly a year, your coach isn't going to sit you down. You're not going to run gassers. You're not going to run laps. Uh, but this is twofold, okay? This is not the first time this has happened. This is not the second or third or fourth. This is about the eighth or ninth time this season alone that Julius Randle has not been able to comport himself like a professional. The difference is that last night it morphed into a totally different part of the equation when he starts getting in the face of a teammate, which is utterly unacceptable, completely problematic, and it's got to end. And while I blame Julius Randle, you know who I really blame? Who? I blame the coach. <laughs> Why? I, I blame Tom Thibodeau for allowing this to fester and not doing anything about this at all. And again, you're not going to light him up on TV. You're not going to, you know, sit him down like you can a high school or a college kid. But the fact that this goes on once a week, yeah, once every other week, sometimes twice a week if he's really in whatever kind of a mood, the fact that this has not been addressed tells me, or fixed, that Tom Thibodeau has not addressed this and that is just, that's unacceptable. Yeah, but Julius Randle is a grown-ass man. He's been in the league for six years, seven years now, right? He's been around. He's he's a veteran at this point. He's been all NBA. He's been an all-star. He's someone who this season, for the most part, we've been talking about as one of the great stories in basketball, especially after what went on last season. How can Tom Thibodeau shouldn't have to proctor or – direct Julius Randle to be a certain way with his teammates. He's a grown man. What the hell is Tom Thibodeau supposed to do? Uh, you talk to him at practice, uh, going to his, you know, he, hey, listen, let's grab something to eat on the road. I mean, yeah, yeah but in so the, then what's the role of a coach? I but, mean, when something goes awry, the coach just throws his hands up and says, I can't fix it. He's a grown-ass man. Yeah, but in the, the head coach. In the heat of the moment, there's not much that really anybody can do, especially if – if Julius Randle has a propensity to do these things, if it's just it's just his DNA, it's just his personality. You know people like this. You played with people like this, just yep. like I did. You, you 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 needle them the wrong way, they go off. Right? They just they just flip the switch. You're like, whoa, hold on, maybe I poked the wrong bear. <laughs> yeah, well, I got you. And, and I don't think Julius Randle is is actually like that. But there are times where it's it's almost pointless to try to calm them. And I felt like that's what this was last night. He was, you're trying to calm him down. He's not really off the edge, but as soon as you try to calm him down, that's when it, it actually flips the switch a little bit. It, fl it turns him around um, and gets him overly uh, excited and emotional. So, But what's Tom Thibodeau supposed to do about that? Well, I'll tell you what he's not supposed to do. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, you got you to gotta try. Mm. Uh, I was a bad look last night. I want to play this for you. Listen to Mike Breen on MSG. Go ahead, Dove. That won't go. Randall has it. And Randall gets knocked and falls to the ground. And as the first half comes to an end, Randall has to stop yelling at the officials. He's going to get a technical. His teammates try to keep him away. Leon Wu is a former player, NBA player. And if there's a technical foul. It hurt enough for Randall. It's become nonstop recently. Randall getting a man of quickly, but quickly's right. Randall has to stop. Now, okay, so there go to commercial break there. Yeah. So, so obviously, Breen knows he's got to wrap it up. They started playing the music, and I don't know, maybe if I'm producing or directing that, I maybe don't play the music at that point yet. But <laughs> yeah, let that let that <laughs> let that play out a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, bet, I bet you if it was national TV, mm -hmm. they probably would have. But you know, maybe from a Knicks point of view, they try to keep yeah. this thing moving. Yeah. No, we got bills to pay, man. <laughs> and so nobody looks bad. Maybe more than that. Oh, but I see. so I, I don't really think that Breen had a real chance to describe that. Like there, it's one thing. If you're chirping at the ref, it's another thing what a teammate who, by all accounts, is a terrific young man in IQ, who who's always emotionally stable, 
Um, always plays with great joy and great energies. Uh, appears to be a great teammate. You know, he tries to really in a bit. And then, you know, Randall starts barking at him. And listen, I don't bark at each other. Grown men, you're right. But there's a little bit of a line that I thought was crossed last night. And, and, and you could just tell the way the Nick players reacted to IQ. A couple of guys, they actually put their arms around him. Again, that wasn't described because obviously Breen's got to go to break. But if you saw it, you saw it. If you were watching it, you saw it. And, you know, I, I know that you've said a couple times, what, what can Fibs do? He's a grown ass man, and you're not wrong. The mod- you're not literally wrong. I know that the modern athlete gets paid a ton of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a lot of ways, even the old school coaches like Tom Thibodeau, I don't want I don't want to say power, but their their control has been minimized a bit. The players have more juice. I get it. I understand modern sports. I don't complain about it like an old geezer get off my lawn because it, I, I really it doesn't bother me until it bothers me. <laughs> and last night bothered me because last night was not the first time this happened. It has happened at least seven or eight times this year. It happened last year, and Tom Thibodeau was the coach last year. So again, I, I know that there's a balance that you got to strike here. I'm not saying that you cause more of a scene by mm-hmm. pulling him away or you know getting in his face. No, if you're Thibodeau, you don't do that. But there clearly, to me, there's been no steps taken behind the scenes to alleviate this this aggressive. And I love aggressiveness, which is weird, but it's got to be channeled yeah, the right a, way. It's a, this it's, was it's a bad look. It's a line that Julius Randle's toes. And just as an aside, I don't necessarily disagree with why he gets angry at the referees. There's a lot of calls that he doesn't get. And now maybe this is an earth. You got to earn it type thing. And uh, Leon Woods, that was the referee, right, that he was referencing? Uh, yeah, Leon Woods. Played Leon, the NBA. Played yep. the NBA. I can imagine in Leon Woods' mind, having been in the NBA, he was, wasn't a star. Nobody will know his name. But having been in the league, he he has this mentality of you got to earn that, right? Before I give you those type of calls, you got to earn it. And that's probably what Julius Randle is pissed off about, the fact that a guy who played in the league knows that, you shouldn't have to earn the obvious call, but he's actually making him earn the obvious call. He gets upset about it. The But the, the bigger picture that you're referring to is what's Tom Thibodeau's control over this team. I got to tell you, watching this Knicks team all season long, they're they're in the 5C. They're probably going to stay there. I mean, maybe they fall back with, Julie, with, with Jalen Brunson banged up. It's just a, it's a different presentation. It's a different le- lack of, I don't want to say lack of leadership, but it's just a different void of leadership that's not that's not there when he's not playing. So hopefully they stay in the five seed. But when I look at what Tom Thibodeau has done all season long, I can't I can't nitpick his handling of an emotional Julius Randle as a problem sign or as a as a as a as a terminal piece of something that they're really starting to build right now. It's I can just, I I just I can't see it that way. I can I, I think Tom Thibodeau deserves to be lauded for how he's managed this team and got them playing at a much higher level consistently than they ever have been. 877-337-6666. Tiki and Tierney on the fan inside of our Town Fair Tire studio. Uh, powered by Town Fair Tire. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. I'm going to disagree with that here, Tiki, because I think that last night could be, and hopefully it's not, uh, but a, a painful foreshadow mm. of the playoffs here. Because if, if Julius Randle is not able to exercise self-control against the Orlando Magic Mm. in an otherwise benign one of 82 regular season games, you're telling me if that same situation presents itself that he's going to be able to check himself uh, against the Cavaliers, game five, three minutes to go in a game, home, road, pivotal swing game. Uh, My answer is no, because there's been no evidence that he's able to. That's the coach's job. I I don't think that... I don't think it's just a benign game, though. That's that's the issue. I think that the Knicks are starting to feel some heat. Um, but he's been doing this all season. True, true. But we haven't really noticed it. No, I, think, I have. I, I no, no, no. The, don't say we. It, I've noticed it. I haven't. I well, think the, I think you got to. If you watch the games, you'll notice the, it. I think the urgency. He does it all the time. But I think the ur- yeah, of course. But everybody does this all the no, time. No, they, they don't. That's the, nonsense. The, the, the NBA is full of complaints. That's that's a, that's a, that's a wrong statement. That is nonsense. Not everybody does this. Who does this on the Brooklyn Nets? Who does this on the Boston Celtics? But, but, Who does? Honestly. But, but the point is, people. I'm talking about complaining to the officials. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what Breen's talking about. His confrontation with, 
Emmanuel quickly. I, who knows? I mean, Julius Randle's a hothead. He is what he is. I'm talking about complaining with the officials. The thing that got this thing, got him whatever, got his ire blown up. And honestly, I think Emmanuel quickly engaging him is what pissed him off even more. If he hadn't said anything, just let him handle it. Maybe it doesn't escalate to where it got to. But so the arguing with the officials happens every single night in the NBA. Now, part of that is deserved because the officiating is just, it's random. It just it doesn't feel consistent. It doesn't feel um earned or whatever. It's just it's just it's all over the place. And so I get the arguing with the official. It's the interpersonal relationship between the Knicks, when this in this case, IQ and Julius Randle, that I think you're taking um, issue with, and you're putting it on Tibbs. But how the hell is Tibbs supposed to handle that interpersonal relationship in real time on the court when when there's when there's chaos starting to to erupt? You know what I mean? I can't put that on Tibbs. I just don't see how he, how he Im- impacts that in any way. Okay, so. I will say this. There's been an influx, and, and Breen talked about it last night. There's been an influx of of young refs this year. Mm. And they're they're trying to earn stripes. And I get it that there are some veterans that are going to test them and try to push them around. Not literally, but, you know, try to have their way and get a little influence, get a little benefit of the whistle. I got that, right? But I'll tell you how Tom Thibodeau solves this. It's not going to happen overnight. But clearly, he hasn't even tried because this is now two years, the antique really, two years of immature, borderline boorish behavior yeah, but from most, Julius. And let's it, not let the great numbers fool us. But it mostly has gone away. I think, I But think it, it hasn't gone away if it continues to resurface itself at the most inopportune times. Well, I think, th- I think it surfaced last night because they were... And they were frustrated. I mean, what did they score? 24, 22 points in the first quarter? It was bad. It was right before halftime. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying in the first quarter, right, they, just, we'll they get just got off to a bad stop, okay. a bad start. And they're frustrated. Nobody else frustrated. got teed up like that. Just him. Yeah, but it's just his personality. But that's my point. You got to try to tweak it. Yeah, but it's hard. It's hard to change somebody. Here's how I would. I, I do know that. I do know, yes, the fair. In, in terms of the the world uh it is it is hard to change personality but within the context of a team mm. you've got to at least try because your actions negatively impact those around you yeah but do you think this is going to affect them come postseason time if he gets teed up in game five in a two possession game against the Cavaliers the answer is yes yeah. I, I don't. I think I think. In so the you post- think once the playoffs start, he will completely change. It's not this. about. It's the, not about him changing who he is. Uh-huh. It's just a. It's a matter of does this impact how they're playing and their and their their chances of success. Honestly, the biggest issue, and and we've talked about this multiple times over the last two weeks, is Jalen Brunson. When Jalen Brunson's not on the court, this is a completely different Nick team. It it, it almost takes Emmanuel quickly being at a level that he's not quite consistently at as a superstar for them to win when Jalen Brunch is not there. And obviously it's the scoring and it's the playmaking and all those other things, but it's it's the leadership, right? There, I think there is a – he's the great mitigator for this Knicks team. It, all, think of all the dysfunction from last year. That kind of has gone away, and a lot of it's because of Jalen Brunson. When he's not on the court, it it – Kind of turns back to that anarchy a little bit, right? And it's just, it's just, it's, it's like you're just sitting on eggshells waiting for something bad to happen. And then, it, like last night, because they're playing Orlando, who they should have wiped the floor with, mm-hmm. and they they're not, and it, they play terrible to start the game. They get frustrated, and there's nobody to contain it. Now, should Tips be able to do that? Yeah, in theory, but he's not on the court. And when when your when your leader's not on the court. Sometimes anarchy reigns. Well, Greg Popovich wasn't on the court. Was he going to let that happen? Steve Kerr's not on the court. Yeah, is that going to fester? No. Spolster's not on the court. That going to happen regularly down? And I say regularly. This is this is a weekly occurrence. Those are better teams, though. That doesn't matter. That's completely immaterial to the conversation. And by the way, I don't know that they're. Oh, you mean like at their apex? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah. But that's to me. That's not. That doesn't matter. There's no doubt that those teams, Duncan, Ginobili, Park. Yeah, of course they're better than these Knicks. Of course. But that doesn't matter. This is about control, control, and and more directly, this is about restraint. Uh, something that Julius Randle does not have enough of. Now, again, easy to you know, just throw a problem out on the air. What's the solution? I'll tell you what the solution should be. Now, maybe Tom Thibodeau's doing this, but he's not doing it well enough if he's doing it at all. 
what you do is not in, in you know not in front of cameras when everybody's volatile and everybody's worked up. I get that. What you do is you knock on Julius Randall's door at the Four Seasons, or you text him, "Hey Jay, you got a couple of minutes? I'm going to roll by. Come on by, Coach. Yeah, we're good. Come on by." And we sit there for an hour and we talk as human beings, coach to player, man to man, and we fl- and this is, should have been happening two years ago. And we flush it out. Uh, and we let them know so that, w- that, there's, that there's a trust that I'm never going to try to embarrass you. But when this happens, when I look at you or if I put my arm around you to try to get you back to the bench, mm-hmm. you're not going to snap at me. And Tom Thibodeau's never even in the – like, you're never even in the picture. Yeah. So if Quickly doesn't do it, yeah, well, who's going to do it? Well, I mean – So it's Quickly's fault for it, trying to be a good teammate? Is I, that the spin? I think that's the role of Jalen Brunson, who's not there. Okay, and, but yeah, I, I, fair, but he wasn't there. I, I know. So, and in 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 in, in that void, it bothers you me. Get, Tick. You get some chaos. It bothers well, me. I think it bothers you because they've lost three games. I don't even care about that because well, nope, that's wrong. That's I, I swear to God, that's not the. I didn't even mention the loss. I don't care about the loss. I've told you all year. Well, I've told you at least a couple of months. The Knicks went healthy, and you know Brunson's been alarmingly banged up with a multitude of things. Last night's the wrist, the of course the ankle. You get him right, he's healthy. Knicks could could beat. Anybody. I'm not worried about that. I don't care about the loss. I care about this volatility within their within their best player, him or Brunson, uh, that might rear its head at the worst time and cost them a playoff game. That's what I'm worried about. Teddy's in Yonkers. What's cooking, Teddy? How are you? Uh, good morning, guys. Uh, great show. Uh, I agree with both of you. It's a question of controlled frustration controlled anger. You don't think that I get upset with a lot of these right-wing people on these talk shows, whether it be radio or... T- Click. <laughs> yeah. Later. Get yeah. lost. Yeah. Vince is in Shrub Oak, New York. What's up, Vince? Hey, guys. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree with you. The guy is getting beat up the whole game, and even Clyde mentioned it a few times that he's been fouled at no calls, and finally, they throw the guy down to the ground. Now, I don't know about you. If somebody throws me to the ground, they're going to hear it from me. Yeah, of and course. As far as, quickly, as far as quickly opening his mouth, he's got no right. He's new to the game. He's got to keep his mouth shut. Somebody with some, some experience can say something to Randall, but especially not in the heat of the moment like that. Nah, he's keep I, we his see mouth it differently. Shut. We see it differently. Go ahead, Tate. No! Yeah, I th- I think, well, I'm just saying no, we see it differently. I think, I think quickly is playing a role. I think I, look, he's he plays fast, he plays aggressive. It's why you love him. He's only in his third season, right? So he, you're right; he hasn't been around for a long time. But he's filling right. a role. But he's filling a role, Vince. But and that's it, the wrong time. It's the wrong time to open up your mouth to a veteran like that. No, Wait, no, down. Nah, I disagree. No, I think he he he, he was trying to keep Randall from getting a T. Mm-hmm. He made it worse. He made it worse. No, he, and you're right; he probably did, but. I think he had to do that because, as BT mentioned, Tom Thibodeau was nowhere close to it. Yeah. Right? So he, he had to do what he was doing because that's his role. I mean, he takes over, not te- not technically, not, not actually, for Jalen Brunson because it's a different – It's different. he's asked to do different things, obviously. But that's his role in that moment as the guy who is the, is the, is the point guard, who is the, is the creator without Jalen Brunson. He has to go calm him down because nobody else was doing it either. Yeah, I mean, listen, um, and again, last night's a little different. Every night is unique. I get that. Score, opponent, officials, personalities, what the officials say. to Some of these guys will bait you, obviously. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying that that happened last night, but I do understand that there's context and, and every situation's uniquely different. Okay. Uh, well, if 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 the if the Knicks are so tired, which, by the way, I don't believe that that's, that's – I don't think that no. that's the case. No. That Randall's getting beat up every night like he's uh, – I don't know, LeBron at age 20. I, what, that's not the case. Just watch the games. I'm not saying that there's no games where he gets a little unfairly uh, whistled and that the Knicks and other teams, been a lot of officiating issues this year, haven't been on the wrong side of the whistle. They have been. I admit that. Same with the Nets, same with the Nuggets, same with the Jazz, you name any team. There's been situations where they just haven't got the benefit. But don't tell me uh, if your star player is getting the crap kicked out of them on, on a nightly basis. Well, you know what should happen? How about Tom Thibodeau get face-to-face with a ref? You get teed, and you get thrown out. Yeah, yeah. That's what you do. Yeah, make it known that you're unhappy about it. That's what coaches do. That's what they're supposed to do, especially in real time on games. Correct. Now, we can deal with the last-second malfunctions. It's not easy. 
But those last second, you know, dribbles into double teams and, you know, a little late to recognize the double, the pass is intercepted or he dribbles off his foot. That's one thing. That's a basketball thing. I don't really want to have to deal with an emotionally unstable superstar or star, more specifically, during the playoffs. And that's what we have. We have a volatile, unchecked guy who just does whatever he wants. And I thought he crossed the line last night. I do. If you disagree, I get it. I thought he crossed the line it, with a teammate. 877-337-6666. All right. We'll get to you called to a lot of baseball today as well. We got you to one that it's Yankees baseball. So a shorter show today. Tiki and Tierney on the fan. <laughs> 